Every once in a while, bands organically come together, people who have the same thing in mind. Some bands get together because the guys in it were born to play, and they all want nothing in the world more than to play music. Somehow I managed to wind up being able to spot that when it happens. Uh, and I spotted it here and, uh, and decided that uh, I was probably the luckiest guy on the face of the earth because one of the guys is my son. And he's an utterly brilliant musician, but that doesn't guarantee that it'll go ka you know? And the guitar player, Jeff. I've been working with Jeff for like six years, and, and I decided I wanted to play with him the first six notes I heard him play. Music is personal. It's the language of, of, of emotion, you know, it's the language of, of your heart. And uh, it matters to us. Uh, we don't do it to make money. We do it because we couldn't possibly do anything else.
Well, there is an interesting story how we met. Um, I was playing, I was performing with Mark Cohn, and we were opening up for Crosby, Stills & Nash. They were doing an acoustic tour, and uh, Mark and I w was touring as a duo. So we were at the Blossom Music Center in Ohio, I believe, Cuyahoga Falls in Ohio, and uh, Mark and I were doing our sound check, and we're, you know, plugging in the guitars and getting things tuned up, and <clears throat> all of a sudden I see David walk through the wings and come in. And as soon as I see him, I start playing triad. And the, the first notes he played, I said, whoa, 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 who's that? Where, whoa, whoa, where'd that come from? And I ran out to the stage, and I'm sitting there listening to this guy sound check with Mark, and Nash comes up beside me. And we both look at each other and we go, we're stealing this guy. And he looks at me, you know, and starts smiling, and I looked at him and started cracking up. And, you know, from that moment on, I mean, we were kind of joined. You know, there was just something going on there. When David got the news about James and, and James kind of came along, uh, David, I think, felt very natural to kind of say, hey, you know, you and I have this thing that's really great. Let's see what happens when we add James to this. The discussion of how completely in the small end of the odds it is that I would find my son at all, which is rare, and or that he would find me rare, uh, and that he would have chosen the same path as me without knowing that I was his father, which he did, which is impossibly rare, uh, and that he would be really, really good, which <laughs> it's just like infinitesimal. The odds are so long, it's, it's impossible. I see a lot of him in me, and I see a lot of myself in him, especially when we're, when we're playing together, we kind of have this unspoken link, you might call it. And it, it's pretty strange. I mean, we kind of know what each other is going to do, you know, musically. Just in case you didn't catch those names of the guys, that's Jeff Pivar playing guitar. <laughs> Steven DeStanislaw. Andrew Ford. And my son, James Raymond. And this is a song of James, it's called One For Every Moment. to the desert 
red sky Counting all the stars above her Long for every moment he would love her oh. James and Peeve, you know, they're jazz level players. Either one of them could step in a Steely Dan or Hornsby's band or any jazz band and cut right now. I mean, they're that good. We all draw from these very different wells of musicality, but at the same time, we have this place where we very much interconnect. You know, we're interested in a lot of the same styles of music. We all like jazz and we all like taking chances and we all like improvisation and you know never playing the same song the same way twice. It's my first rain of winter My first fall from grace My first hollow echo In the halls of praise I could tempt her I thought he was blind as a bat How could he tear down Temple like that. And how could little Caesar? I couldn't know where of his spoke. But all of his wheeling and dealing turned him to a joke. Like a Mm. 
thicker Got the mind of a slug Cause I keep sweeping problems Under my rug And all of my fine, my fine Fair weather friends I think it's probably one of the best vocal performances. Um, well, I, that's not really fair to say. I mean, he's had so many great vocal performances, but on the record, I th it was just a standout to me. And I think the, the song is uh, very close to David's heart, so it, it took on a special kind of meaning for all of us, I think. A thing happens to you if you almost die and then have a child born. And then on top of that, another you know, brilliant, fully grown son shows up and has a, your grandchild, bang, within 24 hours. His wife gave birth to their kid 24 hours after he met me. It's like, he met his father, became a father, same day, you know. But a thing happens to, to me when I almost die and then I have a child born. And, and that is that you focus in on what matters. You become intensely conscious of what's truthfully really worth a damn and what isn't, you know. Uh, and at the edge, I love because it talks about that. Our grasp is so fragile, threaded so thin. I wonder each day if I'm blowing away. I know that I'm lucky I wouldn't be here at all If somebody's hair hadn't been where I stand At the edge of a very great fall of the sea A woman whose grip holds when you slip But the darkness won't get to Your family won't go You make your heart light The 
When I found out David was, was my biological dad, um, I didn't try to contact him, and I, I didn't really plan to, um, at least right away. I wonder where he is. Is he okay? Is he in some horrible situation where they're abusing him? Is he all right? Is he, you know, lying dead in an alley? Uh, I wish I'd been there for him. Once I found out he was sick, though, you know, and he might not make it, it put a little bit more urgency. Um, it gave me a little bit more urgency to, to maybe try to meet him. And he walks through the door and he's just this incredibly centered up, clear eyed, good, handsome, great young guy with wonderful energy. And I was <clears throat> trying to find it, uh, trying to find a way to tell him that I was sorry. Once I let him know that uh, there was no kind of anger on my part and there, you know, I wasn't tripping on anything. He um, he opened right up, and he was very warm. And uh, you know, he's a great guy.
obviously because of the unique relationship that David and James have and are cultivating, making up for lost time, if you will, there is a very unique and interesting dynamic that, that goes on between the two of them as well as in this band and being a, a member of it, a partner in it. And the thing that's really nice is I see that they are not only father and son, but even more so than that, that they're friends. There's an immediate bond there because we're both kind of dealing with almost, you know, for him, almost being a father for the first time, really. And for me, it's definitely the first time I've, I've um, got to experience it. So we talk a lot about the, the trials and tribulations of fatherhood. He's more adult than I am, and I'm the father. But he's, he's definitely more of an adult than I am. We're actually, we're more like brothers raising two three-year-olds, you know, than we are father and son. It's such an amazing thing to, to be involved in this situation where there's this intense connection between David and James, father and son, uh, and being in a, a musical situation where we're all kind of bearing our souls. So all of a sudden we're involved with this very intimate thing. This song, supposedly, is one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that they threw me out of the birds. I don't know. They said it was a song of lust and perversion. <laughs> I wrote it as a love song, I swear to God.
I've seen some very important things come from him because of his love for his family, his wife Jan and, and his son Django. Um, and obviously as we all go through time, we, have, we hopefully evolve. We find out the things in life that are really important. You get very grateful and you tend to write about that and you get very intensely into here and now and you tend to write about that and you tend to write about relationships, about friendships, about loves, about Stuff that is, you know, close to the bone, deep in your heart stuff. He's got a lot of things to draw on to write lyrically, and, and I think once my daughter was born, that, that opened a whole new area for me as well. It's blood is thicker than water, friendship stronger than fear. Love is God's favorite daughter, it's perfectly clear. Uh, again, you know, I'm, I'm in there trying to write about the stuff that really gets me, and uh, the blood is thicker than water line came from thinking about James. Musicians spend an awful lot of time on the road. This is because we have not figured out a way to convince you to come where we live. So we have to come where you are. That's okay. But uh, this is another song that we wrote for this record that's about that very thing. It's about being in strange places and calling home.
An artist always loves their newest music, or their newest art, or their newest picture, or their newest book, the best. It's just, that's how we are. It's one of the things that helps us maintain forward motion, because we love the process of birth. I think the reason why we're all there is to make really good music and to celebrate the art and bring what years of, of working hard at what we do to the table. Um, so it's honest. The music is honest. The songs reflect that honesty. We're a band that tends to feed off the energy of whatever crowd we're playing to. So when certain cities had a little bit more fire and, and we had some really great nights, and even in the ones where there wasn't a lot of feedback from the audience, we, we still had fun and, and grew, you know, which was what new bands do. It's a love song called Rusty and Blue. These words into a cluster Put them in a pile Like feathers on your floor Voyages in sea floors Deep blue and rusty So many at you Leave them by your door There's a man on the corner He's got the moon in his eyes And he comes here to visit And he wears a disguise And I wonder if he's looking For friends or for true I think he's calling for some That telephone She defeats fear with her eyes She thinks life's fine So I think she's wise And my heart wants to give her A gift so fine That it will speak for me And tell her just where I stand on a pillar and it's melting like ice Is that a bit some I live twice and I have all these feathers and leaves on my floor that I don't want just blowing around loose and Show them to you Gifts from the sea floor Rusty and blue
these two lies Hold my attention quite well You see the lies almost never Run parallel Like the boards in the flooring All deep grained and warm Faded and faded Long before you Every song that we've worked on has been a unique dynamic. Certain songs David will have lyrics written to, pre-written lyrics. There's a song called Little Blind Fish that we did on the first record that David had a set of lyrics and he handed me just a sheet of paper, his poetry. And I sat down one night after playing at a blues club in New York City and came home, had a couple beers. So I was feeling, you know, relaxed in a good mood. And I just put these like blues changes to this song and it just fit so well. I showed them to Jeff, you know, and Jeff just said, oh man, these are cool. You know, wait a minute. It, it's, a, it's like it needs a... And he started playing this guitar thing and I went, give to I. Little Blame Fish I'm still working on. I still don't know what the heck he's talking about. But um, it's a fun tune to play, let me tell you. fish in a wide river singing who is the gift who is the giver is it a matter of choice where you go does it give you a voice just to know
little blind fish staring at a mirror. Said, How far can you see as it getting nearer? And a little blind bird sitting up a tree singing, This is the end now. Can't you see? It's all gone. We're going to have a new record out, I think, in the fall, and uh, we'll be touring. And the uh, record will probably be quite a bit different than the last record. Um, but there will be, there'll be certain things that are obviously the same, but I think it's going to take it a little bit different direction. And uh, hopefully we'll be selling a lot of records. <laughs> well, lots more gigs and more songs and a whole lot of fun. What we'll be doing uh, a year from now, hopefully, is what we're doing now, only much better. Because this band is only just scratching the surface. If you think we were good, and we were, <laughs> we're only just starting, man. This band's a year old. You break. When we're three years into this thing, we'll be able to unscrew your head.
Jeff Pilar. Andrew Ford, Stephen DeSantis run. Yes, see. David Crosby. I could not have written uh, the songs on this record uh, 10 years ago. I wasn't ready yet. Now I feel like I am. I feel like I'm, I'm ready now to do some of the best work of my life.